Hey, good morning. My name is Dan Felpin. I'm a light sport instructor, fixed wing and gyroplane. And we're at my one of my hangars for Foxtrot Aero. And today we're going to take you for a short ride in the Auto Gyro Calidus and show you a little bit about what, what the Auto Gyros are about, or gyroplanes more particularly. We're just getting ready to start the pre-flight and I'll get into that off camera, but we thought we'd take you on a very, very quick tour of the cockpit. Those of you pilots will recognize most of this stuff, although the layout is somewhat different. Starting on the left, we have throttle and it has an integral brake and that's a little bit different than a standard airplane. On the left side, compass and engine RPM that you would expect to see, but we have an additional gauge in that we have a uh, RPM for the rotor. And we'll talk about that some other time. This is a brake for the rotor. This allows me to park it. Right now it's on. There's a little pad at the top that's been activated to hold it steady. Intercom, airspeed, altimeter, pretty straightforward. And then our engine gauges on this side. So we have oil pressure, oil temperature. This aircraft is powered by 100 uh, horsepower Rotax. This is common in the gyroplane world and thus is hybrid cooled. So we have one more gauge down here and that is we also have cylinder head temperature, fuel gauge, and then this white gauge, which is gonna become important to us. But the trim is pneumatic and this tells me how much pressure is in the system. So I trim a normal, normal airplane, I'm looking for a pointer or a, a lever position. In this aircraft, I'm trimming by pounds or bar, depending on which scale you wanna work off. And then we have our electric panel down here, mag switches and uh, key start. The only difference in the mags in this aircraft are on toggles instead of being built into the key start. And because it's a Rotax, we have no mixture. So we have a choke. So it's a little bit like starting your snowblower or lawnmower. And as the engine warms up, we take off the choke. The uh, Rotax series of aircraft, uh, if, if they're carbureted, which this one is, uh, have altitude compensating carburetors, so we don't need a mixture. We got a beautiful day, let's go fly. Genosha Tower, Gyro 485 November Kilo, holding short 25 left east departure. Gyro 485 November Kilo, Genosha Tower, runway 25 left, clear for takeoff, left down with departure approved. Clear for takeoff, left downwind, departure approved, 485 November Kilo. Okay, so we're going to come out here. The big difference is when we get onto the runway, we're going to be holding for a minute or two while we pre-rotate um, the rotor, and we're looking to get it up to 200. And the early part, where normally in an airplane you'd go kind of to full power right away, you're going to see me go to about two-thirds, three-quarter with the stick all the way back. And that's going to be to force air up through the rotor and bring it up the rest of the way to flight speed, which is about uh, 325, I want to say. Now, I'm going to bring the pre-rotator up, bring up a little engine power, and I'm activating the pre-rotator. we got to get the switch. Come on, girl. There it goes. You'll see it start coming up. When we get to 200 is when we're going to begin the takeoff roll. All right, we're at 100, letting it catch up. So I let it catch up, add a little power, let it catch up. 140, 200, stick's coming back. Rotor's beginning to gain power. Forward a little bit, and there we go, flying off. Looking for a climb of 65. We've got it. Got and me. we're up and out. The gyro is often confused as a stole vehicle. It is uh, not a stole vehicle. It's uh, it's short landing for sure. It can be very short landing with a little bit of a headwind, like zero rollout for all intents and purposes. However, it's not a short takeoff vehicle. Typically, I think of this as about needing the kind of runway I need to comfortably get my champ off the ground. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop into Sylvania to try and do some demonstrations here.
Uh, let's go ahead and head east to the lakefront where we can work at uh, low level over the lakefront safely and uh, without disturbing anybody. So we're doing, you know, 75, 80 right now, fairly level flight. If I want to slow that way down, slow flight in this thing would be about 35. One of the things we can do is we can descend vertically. What we're going to do is we're going to descend. We'll come down uh, five or six hundred feet, and we're now in descent. I'm going to bring some power on so that I keep rudder authority. Four hundred feet. I'm going to begin to bring it out of slow flight. I'm going to drop the nose and bring up the power a little bit. so I can pull these very, very, very tight turns, very slow speed. Really bring this thing around. Um, and that was coordinated turn. If I want to rudder it around, I can really turn this quite sharply. I can't spin it, so I can just yank it around with the rudder. And you can see now we've turned it just about our rotor diameter. And so these are endemic to the aircraft. These are not things that are special because I'm some great pilot. I'm certainly a proficient pilot. Um, but I can do all of these things quite easily. So in the air, it, it's going to fly very much like you. It, it handles like an airplane. The reasons it all works, you know, are slightly different because we're tipping the whole disc uh, or tipping the whole wing uh, to create movement on two of the three axes. Uh, this transition is pretty simple, especially if you have any tail dragger time, uh, because the main thing with the gyro is keep it straight and uh, on takeoff and landing. So that's pretty simple. Uh, once you get that, it, it becomes a, a fairly simple transition. And getting used to the drag. Rotor is huge drag, so when we pull the power to come down, if the earlier footage came out, man, you're really looking at some grass. That's fine. Um, and, and the glide ratio is not as good as an airplane. I think in a gyro, it's about three to one. And so, but it feels like an aircraft for the most part. Um, there's some extra stuff to do, obviously, by now with pre-rotation and getting the rotor shut down after you land. But other than that, it, it's pretty much like a normal airplane. Um, it doesn't fly very fast, but it has a huge high wing loading because we're loading on 28 feet, roughly, of wing. And I'm going to bring the power up a little bit and let you climb just a little bit here, Steve, as we get south on the shoreline. And... Uh, the end result of that is bumpy, crummy days to fly a small, light airplane really don't affect the gyroplane much. You may not go anywhere very quickly, but they, they don't affect um, what I'm doing at all. Um, I'll still feel some bumps, um, but I don't get that kind of kidney jarring, smacked around, kite feeling I do in a lot of aircraft that I fly. And so I can fly it comfortably on a lot more days. You know, I can land the gyro at 20 knots of crosswind, and, and it barely, I can't say it barely cares, but it, it's way within the capability of the aircraft. And frankly, if, if I get enough, the, um, I could just put it down across the runway, right? I'm not going to have any real rollout. I, I rolled that one 25 feet on a little shorter. 
Um, so that's not going to be an issue. In terms of transition, for people who have tailwheel time, um, usually I, I would say 10-ish hours, somewhere between 10 and 15. If you have good feet and you understand your rudder, it would probably be the same. If, if, if not, it may take a little bit longer. But adding it at the sport pilot level is pretty simple. It's more like adding a tailwheel endorsement than adding a rating, except at the end of it, you have to go through a proficiency check. Um, and I won't go into the details of that now. And uh, the view here is amazing. So I'm gonna try and show you, unfortunately, we're kind of past some of the most scenic parts of this. But here's my view from the cockpit. I mean, anywhere I look, I'm, I'm I'm looking out, you know, up, down into the corner. I got a camera on there. So I have this amazing view out of the gyro. And so if your thing is going to Hamburg Socials and putting around and looking at fall colors, or you maybe have something you like to survey, the gyro is a really good option and it will do some of the things a helicopter would actually do without the vast expense or complication of a helicopter. All right, fuel pump is on, lights are on, gauges are clean. And tower, uh, gyro five November kilo is coming up on two mile final for two five left. Tower five November kilo, runway two five left, clear for the option, then left close traffic. Clear for the option, then left close traffic, five November kilo. All right, so this is gonna be interesting because if you haven't felt it, I've been reducing power and we've been climbing steadily, which is the symptom of a pretty hefty updraft. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Normally we joke that these things come down like their wings have been pulled off. Now we're finally making it down to pattern, but it took a, a pretty severe power reduction to do it. And we're going to come out here, we're coming on to final, and we're in a totally different breeze. That updraft you felt was the easterly coming off the lakeshore, meaning the westerly that is prevailing on the on the airport. Uh, here's the updraft again, feel it? Yeah. You can feel it going up. We're not getting booted on it. But I'm trying to come down and it's trying to take me up. Son of a gun. Come on, girl. Oh, there's our updraft. Five, five golf on the visual two five right. Come on, girl. Five, five golf, there's there's right, our downdraft. Right, down right, right. right. Looking out ahead. We're got a quartering tail right there. Looking out ahead. We're gonna begin to flare it. We're gonna keep working it. Each time it comes down, we're gonna pull back. There we go. 